Hello, this is Steven Hour. Yes, we are back with another Green Hornet 66 episode review. Today, we'll be reviewing the episode, Give Him Enough Rope. So without any further ado, let's head straight into this review. We begin this episode with, oh, we begin this episode where basically a small time hood and basically stool pigeon, Joe Sweet here, is out there meet, essentially plan to meet someone. But he's interrupted when another tough guy gangster by the name of Charlie comes in. And basically, you know, talks him into coming into this warehouse. And ba and basically, he is killed in the warehouse with this rope, with this um guy all dressed in black with a mask that swings on a rope. And at the end of this rope is some kind of noose that gets on his neck. And essentially, he breaks his neck. It turns out that this guy, all dressed in black, is the boss of a criminal operation. And it turns out Joe Sweet was gonna was um going to give um some photos. That would essentially be damning. We don't know what it is, but it results in him getting with Charlie, getting rid of Joe Sweet, and the man in black swinging up on the rope, rope prepared to meet apparently a reporter that was about to come by the name of Ak by, and we know who this reporter is, Mike Axford. We do the usual opening credits and we get back to where we left off. Turns out the Green Hornet is also aware of this meeting and is coming down in case something happens to Mike Axford. We then cut to Mike Axford meeting at the meeting place where meeting place but he's interrupted when the green hornet just happens to show up and gas him with his gas gun they then enter the building to find the man you know milling to complete the transaction but find that the that the man in black has disappeared realizing that they will have to catch him another time they quickly leave we then go back to the daily sentinel where it's revealed what's going on it turns out mike axford was about to meet joe sweet on pictures that would prove that Colin, that uh, some man named Collins was running a essentially an insur an insurance and accident racket, which because of these rash of accidents that have been happening, is causing an increase in insurance money. Quite a racket. However, the Daily Sentinel and mostly Mike Axford is really in big trouble because he forgot to mention the word in his article that this is alleged. As a result of this, alleged, and this especially is hard for them to prove since Colony is actually now wheel bound and is very badly injured. As a result of this, as a result of this, the Daily Sentinel is about to get sued and the lawyer happens to be an old friend of Brits and it's a female lawyer. And they and essentially they also get updated that Joe Sweet was found dead in his apartment and is been ruled accidental. But Mike Axford doesn't believe it and continues to write the story, well, to follow up on the story, despite being told not to. We then see the uh, Brit Reed dress up as the Green Hornet go out to, um, you know, to colonies and essentially, you know, essentially use the Green Hornet persona to sort of, you know, rattle him into making a mistake. And we get to see this Mr. Colonies. He is really wheel bound, his neck, he has a neck bracelet and two canes. We get to see a scene where Kato knocks out one of his, um, I guess, bodyguards or thugs. And basically, the Green Hornet is trying to muscle in on Colony's accident racket. We, it also should be noted that before this, we had a scene where Mike, where, not Mike Axford, sorry, Frank Scanlon comes to uh, Britt Reed's house informing that they still haven't found any connection in the accident racket. But also, they did a research on Colonies, and so far, he's come up clean. They don't know how the accidents have been happening. And also, that he that the story is, um, Mr. Colony was about to build some kind of factory here, but was run over by a, well, got hit in a car wreck. And that is essentially his story. But anyway, back to the Daily Sentinel. Mike Axford is still trying to pursue it, and says he's found something new, but Britt tells him to tear it up. Uh, to tear it up as one lawsuit is enough. But however, we f however something gets Brit Reed's interest when he's saying, you know, don't, you know, shouldn't, you know, buy information from people you don't know. But Mac said, well, I checked out his background. He used to he he was been out of prison. He's clean and he works at a custom car shop. This triggers something in Brit Reed to investigate. But before that, he has to go on a date with this lawyer in order, essentially trying to settle this out of court and sort of prevent the settler from really getting a huge lawsuit. They go to this custom car shop where Britt Reed finds a tip of uh, essentially some kind of cane. He then he then drives off. It turns out the men working at this custom car shop, one is revealed to be Charlie, and as we know, 
he is working for this mysterious big boss. Realizing that the that the big man's loyal is here, one of the thugs quickly run in. It turns out that the car wrecks are somehow connected to the auto theft racket, uh, to this um accident racket that's been happening. Uh, but Colony says, and basically one of the henchmen says to Colony that Britt Reed was here. He says he's not worried about Reed. He's worried about the Hornet. But once he's told that his lawyer was here, he quickly comes out, of course dressed in his um with the neck bracelet on and his canes, and saying was um then. The lawyer see them, and they said, well, I'm not sure, but realizing this could possibly be an implication for him, he decides to get rid of the lawyer, lawyer, and an accident for her. So then we cut to the next scene with the lawyer getting kidnapped. Once but Reed gets word of this, he then dresses up as the Green Hornet and goes to Colony's place and tries to interrogate him. He didn't, of course, Colony denies of having any involvement and suggesting that Britt Reed might be responsible because, you know, with him, her getting out of the way, the lawsuit can't be fully done. However, he says Reed is a legitimate businessman, and he's not. I like the little line that Colony says, and who are you, Mr. Good Guy? It's a little nice little joke that that's what he really is, despite him always trying to come off as being a tough guy gangster. However, his cover's blown once he's revealed this tip, uh, once it, when Colony reveals the bit of his cane that the tip is missing. The Green Hornet reveals the tip and says he found out the custom car shop. He eventually drops the persona and is about to attack him, but then the Green Hornet reveals a weapon that become a really big tool in his arsenal for many times in the series, his infamous Hornet Sting, which he uses to blast some of the cane off. Colony, realizing no point in fighting, decides to run away, and we find out that he is the so-called Man in Black, Man in Black, and decide not to pursue him as it's more important to find, you know, the girl first. They then go back to the custom car shop, where they break in, and essentially do some investigating, where they find the, the uh, female lawyer tied up and end up getting into a fight with the green uh, with uh, Colony and his men. The Colony and his men are then tied up and he essentially le uh, leaves them to be wrapped up for the police. And he takes the lawyer with, with him to make sure that she gets home safely. We then end the episode with Reed having essentially a romantic dinner with the lawyer, discussing that the racket has been smashed, evidence and essentially ends on a nice little comedic note there. It's it's a fun way to end the episode. Uh, I like, really, we understand Mike Axford. He's really a reporter, even though he made the biggest mistake that almost cost them, essentially, a lawsuit. It's really fun. It's really fun. Casey gets a lot of fun moments poking fun of, like, how, you know, the how, essentially, Rick Reed is, is uh, trying to date this lawyer. It's fun as hell. Uh, the thing, I think, really is that uh, Kato and Mike Axford are kind of pushed to the side here, don't really get that much, it's, and it's a really shame on Kato's part, because Bruce Lee is a really great fighter, I wish they really gave him more to, not just more to do, but more screen time, it's just a real shame. Now let's talk about the villain. Here, um, um, Colony here, I like how he's, you know, trying to come off as this guy that's been injured, but it's a facade, ironically it's the complete opposite, he's acrobatic, he can swing on this rope, I really like, and he given, and even the Green Hornet gave him a sort of little nickname, the Man in Black. I wouldn't mind him coming back if there was given a second season because of his, because of that ability. And honestly, despite the fact him pretty much being a racketeer, his gimmick of essentially with that rope and being clearly an acrobatic is really fun. And I wish that if he was to be brought back, he could be done in more in more future stories. But of course, that really never happened. Give him enough rope, for me it's so far a really fun, a really fun story. My real problem here, other than maybe not much Kato time, my real main gripe is how sometimes it's almost the, like, the, and now granted the show's meant to be dark, but not so dark to the point we can't see what's happening on screen. That's my real gripe. And because of that, like, there's some fighting scenes we can't really see, um, and it's kind of ruins a little bit of my enjoyment, but so far this episode is pretty good. I like it. And there we have it, that was Give Him Enough Rub. Join us next time we review the next episode in the Green Hornet 66 series. So until then, join, until then, this has been the Steven Hour, and so long for now.